Hi, I'm Katie Mintz. It's Monday, March 3rd, and here's what's happening today in Apple Valley and Rosebow. The Rosemount City Council meets tonight at 7.30 p.m. in City Hall. It's a light meeting this week. The council is expected to accept donations for recreational and economic development programs. Also on the agenda is an agreement with Flint Hills Resources to allow the Fi Rosemount Fire Department to stage training burns at two unoccupied houses on the refinery's property. I'll fill you in tomorrow on the outcome of the meeting. Today, the Minnesota Zoo in Apple Valley announced the birth of its first three-banded armadillo infant. The armadillo was born February 19th, about the size of a golf ball. The infant is believed to be a male. The baby armadillo is expected to make his public debut this summer. The zoo is expecting another notable animal birth any day now. Zoo staff are monitoring Atlantic bottlenose dolphin Allie 24 hours a day. She and her mother, April, have been moved to a holding pool to prepare for the birth. April and Allie were brought to the zoo in January 2008 by the Dolphin Connection in Florida as part of a breeding recommendation by a consortium of zoos and aquariums. The Minnesota Zoo is also home to dolphins Simo, the father of the new calf, and Spree, his daughter. Last weekend, a Lakeville man facing murder charges in connection with the death of a 33-year-old Apple Valley man was acquitted. Charles Otto Reynolds, 32, was acquitted Saturday, February 28th in connection with the beating death of Joshua J. Scare of Apple Valley. Reynolds faced four murder charges and one felony count of first-degree assault stemming from an incident at his home during the morning hours of March 16, 2008. The jury deliberated for approximately 30 hours before re reaching its verdict. Your weather underground forecast for today is partly cloudy with highs around 30 and a chance of scattered flurries and light freezing drizzle overnight. Tomorrow, expect partly to mostly cloudy skies with highs around 35. And we'll leave you today with a report from Lakeville Sun Current Community Editor Joe Palmersheim, who looked into the growing popularity of Dakota County Libraries. With household budgets getting tighter, the Dakota County Library System is turning into an increasingly popular alternative for local residents. Library gate counts for all libraries during 2008 were up about 6.9 percent over 2007, despite the fact that Egan's Westcott Library was closed for a number of months due to remodeling. The number of hours of computer use have increased to 265,000 hours in 2008, more than double the total for 2007. The number of wireless connections made this January was 2,462, compared to 904 during the same period last year, a 172 percent increase. Reference librarians are reporting more contact with people using internet or library computers for job search related projects. Online renewals are also up 18 percent in 2008. The increase in demand for library services is due to several factors. Some of it is due to the library system promoting itself and what it offers. Some of it is also due to extra money from the county used to bolster collections, which has an impact on providing things that people want to circulate. But historically speaking, a down economy, like the one both the state and country are facing, is due for at least part of the increase in traffic, said Ken Berenger, the head of the Dakota County Library System. Historically speaking, library use is in many ways counter-cyclical, Berenger said. People tend to find us during times of downturn, and we find that most people, once things have improved, seem to remember libraries after that. But it's not uncommon to see a period of growth during turbulent economic times, and we see this as keeping in line with that trend over the last several decades. Despite the increases in demand, any increases or decreases in funding aren't clear yet, Berenger said. The numbers are, quote, a little bit up in the air, unquote, until Dakota County has a better idea how the state is going to proceed with funding issues. For Sun Newspapers, I'm Katie Mintz. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you tomorrow.